Hey everyone, it's me Gio and today I'll be sharing some of the most common mistakes that PHP developers make and more importantly how to avoid them. Some of the mistakes that we'll talk about today and the tips on how to avoid them apply to development in general and not just PHP. It's just that these mistakes were part of my journey as a PHP developer so some of them are specific to PHP. We all make mistakes but what sets us apart is how we learn from them. So whether you're a beginner or a more experienced developer grab a coffee or tea or water to stay hydrated and let's begin One of the most common mistakes that developers make is rushing to jump into frameworks without understanding the fundamentals. This includes things like variable scopes, data types and type system operators and their precedents, how to work with arrays, dates, OOP principles and how to apply them, reflection API, basic security concepts like use of prepared statements, how to protect against XSS and similar attacks, and the list goes on. And I'll admit that it's pretty big and overwhelming, but knowing this uh, uh, before transitioning into a framework will be beneficial and can actually speed up the learning process of the framework. By knowing the fundamentals, you'll be better equipped to debug, troubleshoot, and optimize code when working with the framework and no longer look at things as magic. Now, of course, there are some edge cases where your hands are sort of tied and have no other choice but to start with a framework because a project is thrown your way with a requirement to use a specific framework. My advice is that if and when possible, try to go back to the basics and learn those first or do them in parallel. Another common mistake that I've seen is not properly sanitizing or escaping input and output. This is a mistake that not only junior developers make, but also mid-level and senior developers as well. Sometimes we take shortcuts or think that maybe our query is safe and using prepared statements may not be needed for some specific use case. I've been there, done that, and my advice is don't do it. Main reason being that in addition to the first order SQL injection, which is the most common and obvious one and easy to spot, there is also a second order SQL injection, which is a bit more advanced and hard to spot. But, which is why using prepared statements and placeholders is important. If you can't use placeholders, then you can use an array of allow list to sort of filter the input and only let it pass if it's part of that given list. In addition to handling input, you should also properly escape the output to avoid XSS attacks. You can use templating engines that do this for you or use HTML special cars function. You could also use JSON and code function if within JavaScript context. And please note that it's important to escape output properly in different contexts, whether it's within the HTML body, HTML attribute, JavaScript, and so on. Improper error and exception handling is another mistake that developers often make. When working on a new project, we often focus on getting the application to work correctly and we may not pay as much attention to how the application handles errors and exceptions. However, it's important to have a solid error and exception handling strategy in place to make sure that our application can gracefully handle any errors that may occur and provide useful information to then later diagnose and troubleshoot. First, use try-catch blocks, but don't overuse them. Basically, don't try to handle exceptions prematurely. If you catch an error too early, it can actually prevent that error from propagating or bubbling up to higher level error handling code, making it harder to diagnose and fix the problem. And second, avoid hiding or suppressing errors. This is actually a very important one as this can uh, make it harder to diagnose and fix the problems. I've made this mistake where I left a try-catch block somewhere deep down in the code and did not add the logging within the catch block and didn't rethrow the exception either. It seemed fine for that specific use case but then there came a time when the API returned an unexpected status because you know APIs sometimes do that. This triggered 
the exception but my try catch block caught it and didn't really do much about it. So at the end we didn't really know about the error for some time and it was hard to track it down. There are a couple of things that you can do here. You can and should log things, you can rethrow the exception after your custom handling code and so on. You can also catch very specific exceptions instead of catching the general ones. Basically exceptions that you sort of know and expect to be thrown. Premature optimization is something that is sort of a bit difficult to spot and we usually spot it after it's too late. It's when we basically try to foresee the problems that we may or may not have or when we try to improve the performance of something and optimize it without properly measuring the performance impact in the first place. This usually leads us to making uh, such optimizations and refactorings early on which leads to unnecessary obstructions and complexity that can make it harder to maintain and understand the codebase, especially for other developers working on the same application. These are some of the things that I sort of use as a checklist to see if I'm over engineering something. First, have I identified and measured the performance bottlenecks before making any optimizations? Do I have some data to back it up, maybe some logs? If it's a yes, then I consider optimizing the code. Second, is the design pattern or the principle I want to use really necessary for this feature? Am I adding too much complexity for little to no gain? If the answer is yes, then I reconsider making any optimizations or refactorings. And finally, do we actually have a problem here? And this is pretty straightforward. Is there really a problem that I'm trying to solve or am I just trying to be clever? One of the biggest mistakes that developers make is not asking for help when they are stuck on a problem. This can be due to a variety of reasons such as feeling embarrassed, shy or not wanting to appear incompetent. The truth is, everyone gets stuck on problems at some point and there is no shame in admitting that you need help regardless of what seniority level you have. It shows that you're not afraid to admit when you don't know something and you're willing to learn and grow. That being said though, here are some of my suggestions and tips to keep in mind when asking for help. For starters, be respectful towards other people's time. Don't expect to be helped right at the same second you ask the question. Basically, be patient. Try to be specific about the problem you're facing by making sure to clearly explain the problem, what you're trying to do, what you've tried so far, and so on. And most importantly, try to be respectful and open-minded to different perspectives and approaches. You may not agree or like what you hear, but that's part of the learning process. You should try to get out of your comfort zone and be open-minded. So this is it for now, these were some of the most common mistakes that I've seen PHP devs make and some of the mistakes that I've personally made in the past. There are more of course, I just couldn't fit everything in one video so if you like this type of videos uh, let me know down in the comments and I might make more videos like this. Also please feel free to share the problems and challenges you faced throughout your development career below in the comments. I really hope that this video was helpful and that you were able to take away something useful. Thank you so much for watching, smash the like button and I'll see you in the next one.